Good morning, beloveds. Um, I apologize ahead of time. It's springtime and my allergies know it. Um, so uh, it is also St. Patrick's Day. So happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, a few years ago, I looked into the, the reason for St. Patrick's Day and it's not what the Americans think. Uh, it is not it, in America just two things one it's about celebrating irish heritage because there are a whole lot of irish people that live or you know people of irish descent thanks to the potato famine that live in america um my husband is a of irish descent i mean last name is ryan so you know hey um but uh it's not in ireland what saint patrick's day is is a um it's a day of prayer for missionaries around the world because that's what saint patrick was saint patrick was a missionary from england to ireland he was not irish um but he had uh, a fair amount of respect for the irish people and actually was very supportive to uh women in ireland so, I mean, all saints have feet of clay. You can look into that. So, uh, but it is March 17th. Our title is I see with the eyes of God. Our quote is one thing I know that wherein, whereas I was blind, now I see. And that is John 9, 25. The ancient said that there is an all seeing eye. And that if we could cause our physical eyes to see with its vision, we should be looking at things as they really are. But it is not true that too often we see with a blurred vision because we are so confused mentally. Oh, excuse me. But is it not true that too often we see with a blurred vision because we are so confused mentally? The all-seeing eye of God, by its very nature, being one and only, must forever see things as they really are. This is why Jesus said to judge not according to appearances, but to judge righteously. We cannot expect to draw a pattern of this right seeing from the objective world of confusion or our inner thoughts of doubt and fear. Therefore, we are told to see and act according to the pattern showed to thee on the mount. That is, we are to look and think independently of the confusion around us. We are to view everything as we feel the divine, infinite, and perfect being must know and understand its own creation to be. This is seeing with the eyes of God. Today, I am seeing with the eyes of the divine. I am looking at things in a perfect and direct way. I am seeing through confusion to peace, through doubt to certainty, through fear to faith. Quietly then, I review myself, those around me, and everything that occupies my attention, bringing to them all a broader vision, a deeper insight, a more complete perspective of the infinite harmony which I know is back of, in, and through everything that God has made. I am keeping my eye single to this one truth. What God has done is good, Therefore, my experiences are good. What God has created is wonderful. Therefore, I am surrounded with good. In calm judgment, then, I sit quietly with myself and in my imagination look around and see everything according to the divine pattern. As I do this, everything I look upon shall become transformed and reborn. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <clears throat> occasionally he will do these and I got nothing. I got nothing. Um, and it is probably because the world is really messy and confusing right now. Oh, I mean, two years into COVID and then with what's going on, in Ukraine, it is confusing. It is very confusing. And, you know, so 
how am I to look? How am I to look behind the appearances and see the divine pattern? How am I, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I know something that does. And so the only thing I can do is to continue to treat, to continue to meditate, to continue to go into that space. Because I don't have anything, you know, I, I don't. It's, 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 it is confusing. It is, it's very confusing. And sometimes we just need to stand up and say that the world's messy, you know, and the world's messy because a whole lot of people don't know who they are. And a whole lot of people don't understand that there's enough good for everybody. And so that they're, they're busy either trying to take it away from other people or they're busy trying to keep, you know, what they've got away from other people. And it, you know, uh, so, you know, I don't know. I don't know. All right. And that would be the treatment I see with the eyes of God. So, uh, <laughs> and then John is correct. One thing I know that Whereas I was blind, now I see. I can do it on my scale. Doing it on the grand scale of the world. I think that would be a mind-blowing experience. So, I mean, I'm open to it, but I don't know. So the, the quote was John 9.25. Go read it in context. See what he was talking about. Uh, okay. So the ancients said that there was an all-seeing eye and that if we could cause our physical eyes to see with its vision, then we would be looking at things as they really are. Now, sometimes what they're talking about is uh, the, the the third eye, the the pineal gland. It, you know, it's, it's very important to our growth. Uh, so... You know, if you're curious, maybe look up the connections between the third eye and the pineal gl the gland and the all-seeing eye. Um, I mean, the truth is, is that God is everywhere. God sees everything. But for God to act in this world, that's us. <laughs> God acts through us. You know, God is not this supernatural entity um, in the sky that's going to sweep down and go, y'all have just screwed it up. I'm going to fix it for you. That's our job. It is our job. But it is not true. But I mean, here's that question. But is it not true that too often we see with a blurred vision because we are so confused mentally? And this is what I'm admitting to. I am admitting that I am confused mentally. That I don't, I, I understand, but I don't understand. You know, I, I know who I am. And I know who people are. And I see that a whole lot of people have forgotten who they are. And some of it is because they've been taught other things. You know, they haven't heard that call of, you are a beloved child of God, in whom God is well pleased. They've heard other things. And a lot of religions don't teach that they are beloved children of God. And they teach that God's mad at them. And you can see where that can make for a very messy world. And it can make for a very confused state. And then there, where are you? You know, it's like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lay all the feet at, uh, all the blame at the feet of religion, but I'm going to say, hey, religion, you know what? You haven't done a good job. The point of religion is to foster community. The problem with religion is they foster tribes and others otherness and that's not okay and that is what makes the world messy and confused all right the all-seeing eye of god by its very nature being one and only must forever see things as they really are because god can't see anything other than god this is why jesus said to judge not according to appearance but to judge righteously we cannot expect to draw 
a pattern of this right seeing from the objective world of confusion or our inner thoughts of doubt and fear. All right. The objective world of confusion or our inner thoughts of doubt and fear. When we look through the lens of doubt, when we look through the lens of fear, we make interesting choices. When we make choices from faith, when we make choices from peace, when we make choices from love, when we make choices from harmony, we tend to make better choices. Therefore, we are told to see and act according to, and this is open quote, the pattern showed to thee on the mount, close quotes. I'd be curious to know what the rest of that quote is. That is, we are to look and think independently of the confusion around us. Because sometimes, actually most of the time, maybe all the time, when things are messy around us, then the best thing that we can do is pull back, pull in, look within, go to the source, go to the source of our being and sit with that and listen. We spend a lot of time talking to God. How often do we listen? Prayer is definitely talking to God meditation is listening to God. How often do we do it? I don't know. That's a question you can answer for yourself. And I can honestly tell you that if you go to listen to God and God tells you to hurt somebody else or take some, something away from somebody else, you're not listening to God. You're listening to ego. I will always believe that. Well, okay. We are to view everything as we feel the divine, infinite, and perfect being must know and understand its own creation to be. And notice how Ernest doesn't tell you what that is. He just says, this is seeing with the eyes of God. It's like Ernest doesn't have all the answers for you. What Ernest does is he'll point in the right direction and say, now you go, you go walk that path. He didn't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. That was the whole point of Ernest. He's like, everybody has parts of the truth. Nobody has the whole truth. That's why Ernest loved all religions. He's like, everybody's got parts of the truth. And if we could work together, he just looked for the golden thread of truth running through every religion. All right. So treatments, power statements, affirmations, whatever you want to call them. If not, if the words don't resonate with you, change them. If the words resonate with you, please feel free to use them. Today, I am seeing with the eyes of the divine. I am looking at things in perfect and direct ways. Perfect. Remember, perfect means whole, complete. You want to see the whole picture. I am seeing through confusion to peace through doubt, to certainty, through fear, to faith. It's not that we are not going to have doubts. It's not that we're not going to have fear. It's not that we're not going to have confusion. We have to be willing to look through them and not get caught up and twisted around by them. Okay. So Ernest never said, you're not going to have this. Ernest just said, when you do recognize it and look through it. Quietly then, I review myself, those around me, and everything that occupies my attention, bringing them all to, bringing them, bringing to them an all, <laughs> I'm getting all the right words, just not in the right order. Hold on. Okay. Bringing to them all a broader vision, a deeper insight, a more complete perspective of the infinite harmony, which I know is back of in and through everything that God has made. I need to peel back the layers of confusion, of fear and doubt and see through them to the core of the truth 
the reality. Because that's what God made. The messiness, that's on us. And that's free will. It's like we get to make our own choices. And sometimes we make very confusing choices. I am keeping my eye single to this one truth that God has, what God has done is good. Therefore, my experiences are good. I know when you look around at what's going on in the world right now, it's kind of hard to say that. But I would bet that a bulk of your life is good. And sometimes we need to focus on the 90% that is good and let the 10% that is maybe not what we prefer sit on the back burner for a while. Focus on the good. And when we focus on the good, it will help bring up solutions to work on the little 10% that maybe isn't. Okay? Don't let the 10% or whatever the percentage is take over your whole life. It won't do you any good. And when you're focused on what's not preferred, you it's harder to find the solutions. Whereas when you focus on what is good, it will naturally select uh, suggest solutions for what is not preferred. All right. Um, what God has created is wonderful. Therefore, I am surrounded by good. In calm judgment, then, I sit quietly within myself and in my imagination, Look around and see everything according to the divine plan, plan, pattern, the divine pattern. As I do this, everything I look upon shall become transformed and reborn. All right. So here's the challenge, which is what I'm going to call the mission. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to sit quietly within ourselves and use our imagination to look around and see everything according to that divine pattern. Look around and imagine the good. Imagine the good that you would have in the place of what is not preferred. Imagine the good that you would have. And from there, you can do a treatment, you can create action steps, and you can move into it. So I'm asking you to sit in meditation and then use your imagination. That's the mission. All right. Kind of a strange one today. <laughs> but, you know, it's going to be that way. It's going to be that way. All right. I'm going to move into the process of my day. So I'm going to encourage you to do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. And I have a definite suggestion for you today. It's St. Patrick's Day. Wear something green. Even if you're not Irish. Because on St. Patrick's Day, everybody's Irish. Say a prayer for those who are in mission work, who go to places and do things to better the lives of the people where they go to serve. And then beyond that, take the th three deep breaths. Sit with yourself. Sit with your imagination. And spread that love, that kindness, that compassion that I ask you to practice every day. Spread it out everywhere. All right, beloveds. I also encourage you, as I always do, to um, do something to engage your mind and your body. Go get that face full of sun. I actually made it around the corner. Thank you, time change. To see the sunrise this morning. Uh, it was fantastic. And then to watch two places where they were mockingbirds, but there was a mockingbird sitting on a fence post facing the sun rise singing. And then we came around the corner and there was a mockingbird. I'm pretty sure that was a mockingbird as well on top of a light facing the sunrise, singing their heart out. It was amazing and wonderful and fantastic. And you know, maybe I should face the sunrise and sing my heart out too. I just won't do it on here because nobody needs to hear that. <laughs> All right, beloved. I mean, there is that song. You are my sunshine. Okay. 
Um, and that's it. Cause one, I don't want to get copyrighted. <laughs> Drink plenty of water. Open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around. And sometimes it takes watching a bird sing to the sunrise to remember. It's heaven right here. It's all around us. And we need, sometimes what we need to do is focus on that and let the rest of it work itself out. All right, beloveds. Um, take care of yourself. Know that you're loved. Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you today. I will be back with you at 9 a.m. If you missed the soul session, it was interesting. Please get on. We had five wonderful women who talked about their experiences and then invited us into the discussion. So if you want to know who the Be The Change panel is, who creates the soul sessions, most of them were on last night. So it's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. Go check it out. Um, these women are wonderful and lovely and have stories that will break your heart and show you why they are as strong as they are. All right, beloveds. Um, Catch us on the social medias. You want to know what's going on? Email info at creativelife.org. Take care of yourselves. Know that you're loved. I will see you next time. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs>